And I've been asking my viewers and listeners all day in an exclusive Mark Dolan tonight people's poll, should the Tories ditch Rishi Sunak to win the next election? What's your view? Well, I mean, my view is I would love them to ditch Rishi Sunak and plunge themselves into yet another leadership election, yet another period of chaos, uh, because uh, it would assist the Reform Party. But if I were looking at this from the Conservative point of view, the very last thing they need, the last thing they need is another leadership election, particularly as there would be a whole load of hoo-ha about Boris coming back and all the rest of it. And it would just make them look what they are, which is chaotic disorganised, ill-disciplined, complete parliamentary rabble, uh, and it would just confirm that view. So if I were a Tory, that's the last thing I'd want. But I have to say, you know, as a member of Reform, if they want to conduct themselves in that fashion, well, fine. You've left the Conservative Party, Anne, but you know it inside out. Do you think Rishi Sunak is safe, even in the event of a by-election wipeout? Yes, I think he's safe because, as I say, they won't want to go through another period of chaos and uncertainty, <coughs> particularly with all the Boris stuff going on as well. They won't mm. want that. So I think he is safe in, in the sense that, you know, not that everybody will have confidence in him uh, at Westminster, but rather that people at Westminster would say, look, you know, we, we just can't afford to do this all over again. So from that point of view, he's safe. Uh, but uh, you know, if there is a wipeout at these by-elections, he will have been sent a very strong message, which so far he is just not heeding. This Tory government is not Tory. It's not conservative. It's not unionist. It's neither of those things. Uh, and you know, he is getting all this uh, flack uh, and all these bad uh, election results, <coughs> local elections, etc. And yet, he doesn't see that simple fact. However, as the CEO of the country, do you think he edges it over Keir Starmer, which is the likely choice in a year's time? Well, I'd always rather have a Conservative administration than a Labour administration. I mean, I don't think that will come as a great surprise to anybody. But all I can say is, you know, that if Keir Starmer wins, he will be doing what this lot are doing anyway. You know, there isn't really that much difference between them. So if the, um, you know, well, the, the subtext to your question is, you know, should we really be battering the Tories because it might put Keir Starmer in? We bought that last time as the Brexit party. We bought into that argument last time. And looks what happened. You know, you've got a Tory government that's not Tory. Now, Anne, can I ask for your reaction to the news that the Supreme Court have blocked the Rwanda plan? Do you think it's dead in the water? No, not if the government is sufficiently determined, but it's going to take time. Nothing much is going to happen between now and really next summer, I would have said. Now, you know, the lower courts supported it, uh, including the high court. The Lord Chief Justice himself supports it. Uh, and yet, of course, he was outvoted by two dissenting voices. Uh, now, you know, therefore... There is a chance if you take this to the Supreme Court or, you know, you, you take further measures or you make the law more explicit or whatever it is you do, there is a chance that this can go through. Uh, and I think it should go through. I think it is a mighty good deterrent, but it won't be a deterrent so long as nobody's being sent there. And a woman who lost out on a job after tweeting gender critical views is to receive a £100,000 payout after a decision from an employment tribunal, I can see you applauding that judgment. Tax expert Maya Forstatter did not have her contract renewed in March 2019 after writing tweets saying that people could not change their biological sex. She was found to have experienced discrimination whilst working for the Centre for Global Development. And is common sense beginning to prevail? Oh, I think common sense has got a very uphill struggle uh, ahead of it. Uh, yes, now Maya Forstatter, of course, I mean, A, could afford the action, uh, B, is a very confident, fair now, high profile career woman. Uh, and, you know, if I were going to tangle with somebody, I'd think twice about tangling with Maya. But it's Mr. and Mrs. Bloggs that I worry about, the people throughout the country who are in um, ordinary jobs who feel they cannot say what they think at work in case they will lose their jobs. Now, that used to happen in the Soviet Union. That matter, it used to happen in Nazi Germany. 
but in my lifetime it happened in the Soviet Union. Is that what we want to copy? Anne, how's your bank account looking? I've got no doubt it's overflowing from your years of best-selling books, television appearances, parliamentary salary, um, the, the small crumbs we give you from GB News. Your reaction to what looks to be a politically motivated decision to cancel Nigel Farage's bank accounts? I think it should be a legal requirement that if a bank is closing an account, it has to state why. And it might be something as mundane as you've abused your overdraft once too often, or it might be something as esoteric as you've been accused of money laundering. But whatever it is, you should be told at the point of closure. You should be told. Uh, and if the banks won't do that as a matter of decency, then mm. they should be obliged to do it as a matter of law.